Hey everyone, Alex here from Japanese Masters, and today we're gonna go over part seven of lesson two of Mina no Nihongo. That is O. Oh. Okay, let's go and dive right on in into this. As you can see here, we have our very simple O. Oh. Now, this one and another hiragana character, Go, both use the same meaning, but we'll go over that in a second. Let's start by translating this into English. What exactly does this mean in English? Well, as you can see down here, where normally I put the English translation, there's nothing here. That's because this phrase really doesn't translate into English. This phrase makes a noun or a verb more polite. And in English, we just don't really have anything that does that. Let's go ahead and break this down really quick, and hopefully you'll understand it a little bit better. Okay, so we have our o and we have our go. Now, both of these can be added before a noun or a verb to make them more polite. However, when to use each can get a little bit confusing. Generally, o is used before a uh, verb or noun that has a Japanese reading or a kunyomi reading, while go is usually used before a verb or noun that has an onyomi reading or Chinese reading. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can you tell the difference between these two? Well, that is where things get pretty complicated because this is the general rule, but not all verbs follow these rules. Not all nouns follow these rules. Um, a lot of this you're just going to have to kind of memorize and you'll see them quite often. There are actually debates online. Um, if you go to Japanese forums, you'll find debates on which one of these to use for certain verbs. Because, for example, there is a uh, noun, shigoto, which means work. There is a huge debate online whether to put go shigoto or o shigoto. Technically, it should be go because it is the Chinese reading of it, but lots of people use o and say it should be o. So this is something that is very complicated and at this beginner level, you don't really need to know how to use this, more or less you just need to know how to understand this. So if you hear someone say o or go before something, then you'll know what they're talking about and you won't lose um, comprehension of the sentence. This is also, these two are also used a lot in keigo and son keigo. Those uh, two difficult sounding words are just the way of saying honorific in Japanese. So keigo and son keigo is what you use above mas form. So it's even more polite than mas form. And yet again, I was actually told by my Japanese sensei that you will never have to really worry about using this unless you become like a shop assistant or something, but you have to know how to understand it because shop assistants will use it with you. Even though I spent a year in Japan, it wasn't until my last couple of months that I actually started understanding what the shop assistants were saying just because they spoke to me in Keigo and Son Keigo. I could understand, you know, normal conversation pretty well, but when I got to Keigo and Son Keigo, I just didn't know what was going on. And you'll actually see it all over the place. You'll see train stations, um, train conductors, they will use Keigo and Son Keigo in order to be really polite to the people. Okay, let's go ahead and go through a couple of examples to show you exactly how these are used in a sentence and where you might see them in everyday life. Okay, the first one would be, do you like sake? O sake ga suki desu ka? As you can see here, we have our o before sake. Now, there are certain words in Japanese that usually just have o after them, and sake is one of those words, or they usually have o before them. Um, sake is one of those words. There are several words in Japanese that have this. Um, omiyage is another example. Omiyage indeed has the o before it. Technically, it can just be miyage, but if you've ever studied Japanese vocabulary or listened to Japanese conversation, I can almost guarantee that you will not have heard miyage. You will always hear omiyage. Um, osake is pretty much the same. I have actually heard people just say sake instead of osake, um, but Yet again, that is another kind of set phrase word. Um, one more example, I think, is something like uh, you or o you. O you just means hot water. You also means hot water. Um, I think in sushi places, when they're talking about like the tea, if you ever go to the Kaiten sushi places in Japan, where they have the sushi, you know, rotating on the conveyor belt, in front of you there is a usually a place with a hot water spigot that you can put like. Um, you can put it into a cup so you can mix it with their green tea matcha mix so that you can, you know, get yourself some green tea. And I remember the sign saying Olyu and not just you. Um, I believe Olyu is supposed to be more clean hot water, more for drinking, and you is just more general, just the water is hot. Okay, let's go ahead and break down the sentence a little bit. Of course, we have our sake, that means alcohol or the specific type of beverage, sake. And then we have this structure, ga suki, 
which just means to like. Um, the ga goes with the suki, so don't worry about too much whether you have to put wa or ga here. Always put ga before suki. And then we have our des and ka structure, which you should know from previous lessons. Um, overall, yet again, you don't really need to know how to create these, just know to listen for them so that you know the words. Okay, let's go on to the next example. Okay, the next example is please be careful, everyone. This is something I've actually heard um, while in Japan quite a lot, and I actually see it on pamphlets and notices all the time. They'll say it in big, bold letters at the top, Gold Chui Kudasai. This is the Son Kego version of this sentence, um, with the go before it and then the kudasai directly after it. Um, this one, like I said, you'll see all the time in Japan. I believe a lot of the train stations on the ground you'll see Gold Chui Kudasai. Uh, this is just a generally important phrase to know and be able to recognize because generally it means there's danger, so, you know, be careful there. Um, then we have our Mina-sama. This is just how to say everyone in Japanese in a very polite way. Normally it'd be like Mina-san or just Mina, but I decided if I was going to use Sonkego, I should also put the Mina-sama instead of Mina-san. So when I was creating the sentence, I felt more of like it was like a tour guide or something like that telling everyone to be careful. Maybe there was a step or some something dangerous on their journey. So the, the person's like, Mina-sama, go chui kudasai. Like, everyone, please be careful. And as you can see here, we have go and not o in front of this. And following the basic rules, chui is actually a onyomi reading. If you remember, if we have our onyomi reading, you put go instead of o after it. And sake here is in the kunyomi reading. Um, so we put the o before it. And a quick lesson on onyomi and kunyomi if you don't know it. Um, normally, if you have two kanji together like this, it's going to be onyomi reading. And if you have a single kanji by itself, it's usually going to be kunyomi reading. Also, if you have a kanji followed by uh, what's called okurigana or hiragana after it, um, then it's usually going to be kunyomi. Uh, an example of that would be tabemas. If you can think of the word right now, you can think of that the the beginning part of it, the tabemas, the beginning part ta is a kanji, while the rest of the sentence bemas is the okurigana. Um, to be specific, the be is the okurigana. And in that sentence, ta is actually the kunyomi reading of that kanji. So that is the basic rules for o and go. Yet again, if this really didn't make a lot of sense to you and you are not comfortable using this in sentences, don't worry, no one will expect you really, especially at this level, to be using anything like this. However, it is important to be able to understand it and listen for it because I guarantee you that you are going to hear it if you go to Japan or listen to any conversation. Okay. I hope you found this lesson useful. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'd be happy to answer them. If you have any criticisms, also put that in the comments below. I'd be happy to address those. Uh, until next lesson, guys, keep studying Japanese. All right, everyone. See ya.